This morning, Russian forces fighting for control of eastern Ukraine are claiming their first victory in months. Moscow is saying that they now control the salt mining town of Solidar in the Donetsk region, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. The capture of Solidar would be a breakthrough for the Kremlin, which has suffered repeated setbacks. But Ukrainian officials are denying that the town has fallen, and U.S. officials say that parts of the city are still being contested. Joining me now is Admiral James Stavridis, the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, of course. Admiral, it's clear that Russia is making advances. The capture of Solidar would be a morale boost for Russia, but what do you think the state of play is right now, given the competing claims? Yeah, first of all, we'll know more in 24 to 48 hours. My guess is that this town of Solidar will, in fact, fall to the Russians because they have thrown the kitchen sink at it to include the one reasonably capable fighting element aligned with Russia, and that's a bunch of mercenaries called the Wagner Group. So it, it wouldn't surprise me to see Soledad fall. Now, this is not like the Alamo or the Battle of the Bulge. Um, this is pretty small beer in an 800-mile, I'll say that again, this is an 800-mile combat front. So the fact that this one town may fall to the Russians, you're correct, will give them a bit of a morale boost. But tactically, it's not going to be terribly significant. The real prize uh, close by is a town called Bakhmut, much bigger, more strategically important. I think you'll see the Ukrainian resolve stiffen, and they'll hold on to that. So overall, this is a very small, uh, bright spot, if you will, on the part of the Russian army, but still struggling mightily across 800 miles of combat with the Ukrainians. And the, the Russians are really throwing everything at it. It's the Wagner Group, it's conscripts, uh, prisoners from you know, prisons who are afraid. <laughs> there, there's some, some of them, we're told, are less afraid of the enemy, the Ukrainian enemy, than falling backward exactly. because they're being beaten and treated so miserably. Indeed. Um, a good thing to know is that two months ago, Vladimir Putin, with great fanfare, announced a mobilization to raise several hundred thousand new troops. What happened was about 300,000 young Russian men who would have been eligible to be conscripted headed in droves for the borders and have left Russia. Huge brain drain, by the way. Putin is really scrambling, your point, Andrea, to gain the manpower. He's going to the prisons. He's going to the homeless shelters. He's taking people in their 50s and 60s. Look, I'm in my early 60s. I don't think uh, the U.S. Army is searching for me to send me into combat. Uh, but Putin will take anything. It's a sign of how difficult this fight has become for him. And the other, the other signal here is that Russia, Putin, has replaced his commander leading the forces. General Valery Gerasimov is now taking over. Does this signal dissension in the Kremlin to you? It absolutely does. And I know Gerasimov from my days as NATO commander. Uh, I also know his boss, the Minister of Defense, Schweigu. They are in an internal struggle inside the Kremlin to gain the ear, to hold the ear of Vladimir Putin. The competing faction is the individual who leads this Wagner group, a man named Pirgozin. I think that putting Gerasimov in command is a way to signal that the Russians are going to continue to use the same tactics, the same team. And I think that's, frankly, bad news for the Kremlin, because this is the team that has brought Putin a great deal of losses across this theater. He's not exactly reaching out to find a new innovator. He's taking same old story and putting him in command. Not a smart move. As we approach the first anniversary of the war, of course, uh, February 24th. Admiral James Davides, as always, thank you so much, sir.